Have you ever looked at your AVD setup and thought, why am I still running domain controllers just so I can use FH to your profiles? Or why am I doing enter ID join but still need to sync my users from Active Directory? For years, it felt like we were this close to a fully cloud only Azure version type environment, but FHOTIC profiles and Active Directory sync users were always the things that kept on holding us back. So earlier this week, Microsoft quietly dropped something huge into public preview during Microsoft Ignite. It's FHOTIC's cloud only accounts, a feature that lets you use your Entry ID cloud only users use FHOTIC's Azure File Storage accounts with Azure Virtual Desktop with zero domain join zero hybrid identity and zero on-prem anything. So when I first tested this, I actually sat down back and thought, wait, is this finally the moment that we can run AVD the way it was always meant to be run? During my testing, I found one behavior I honestly did not expect. And I'll show you that when we log in later during the video. So make sure you stick around for that. In today's video, I'm gonna show you exactly what this new capability is, why it completely changes the Enter ID join in FHOD story, and how close you actually are to running a fully cloud native profile management solution. We're going to deploy it step by step. We'll configure the key register settings you need to know, and then we'll do a live logon so you can see exactly what the user experience looks like, including that surprise I mentioned. So let's get into it. So first, let's break down exactly what Microsoft will release because this is where the magic actually happens. Azure files can now authenticate directly using Enter ID. That means FS Logics no longer needs NTLM. Kerberos Active Directory, hybrid identity, or any form of domain join. What you're seeing here is FHOTIC finally stepping into a world where profiles follow the user in the cloud without any dependency on traditional identity infrastructure. And that's just why this is so important because it's not just a new setting, it's to start a completely new architecture. It means that we don't have to sync our users from Active Directory anymore because we don't have a dependency on Kerberos. Right, so this enables us to do cloud only accounts. Now that's the theory, let's go through and see how we set it up. So, what we'll do now is we'll head over into the Azure portal and then we'll get this thing configured. All right, I'm in the Azure portal. Obviously, you need a storage account. If you check my previous video from last week, you'll see it went through that whole process. But essentially, the only thing we need to do to the file share is configure the identity. So, I'll show you how to do that now. All you have to do is click new file share. And then we'll call this FS Logics Cloud only, for example. It wants me lowercase FS Logics Cloud only. Okay. So I've got that set to FS Logics Cloud only file share. Provision storage, I'm going to set that to 100 gig, for example. And then we'll go to next. We don't want any backups, so I'm not too bothered about that. Next review. And then I'm going to go create. Okay. So that's going to create me a, a file share. Right, so what we now need to do is configure the identity for that file share. So you can see where it says identity based access, director service, not configured. I need to click on that. And here are the options that we have, right? And um, so we want this one here where it says Microsoft Enter ID Kerberos. And that's set to disabled. I'm going to set that up. So set up. And then we'll just need to tick this box here. Can leave the main services blank we just need to enable microsoft kerberos right okay and then we need to click save so that's updated that storage account as you can see there now that's got enabled and then we also need to set the default share level permissions okay so i'll put something on the screen a bit more about that information and what provision you need to sell it to but for this test we'll just sell it to storage file uh, smb share contributor but i think in production environment you set that to read and then lock your file share permissions down with mtfs permissions but yeah i'll just set this to contributor at the sake of this demo and then we just click the save button and that's pretty much it from a file storage perspective it's very easy to do the next thing we need to do is to make sure that we've got the app registration configured properly when we configure the authentication it actually creates an app registration within enter id so i'm just going to go over into my enter id go to all applications and then you'll see i've got a couple of storage accounts it's this one down here that we've got wd admin youtube test so i'm going to click on that and then we need to do what we call admin consent if we go down to api permissions okay and then we've set to grant admin consent for default directory grant that and tick yes 
that enables the authentication against Enter ID for that storage account. You can see the permissions that it's enabling for that as well. So make sure you do that because a lot of people miss that. All right, so that's the configuration from the storage side, right? So now let's go and have a look and see what we actually need to do for the session host themselves to get this to work. Now we're going to do the device configuration. So there's actually an Intune setting that you can configure this for. So we'll go and have a look at that. But if you want to do this by any other methods and stuff, there's basically these register settings that you need to put in. So it's this cloud care bus ticket retrieval enabled setting. So that's the key thing that kind of glues all this together. We have to make sure that setting is configured. And so we can configure this via Intune as well. Or you can do via group policy, whichever is your favorite bit. You also need to add in this register setting. So HKLM load, load cred key from profile. These two settings here are essentially the ones which make it all work. So what we'll do, we'll head over to the Intune portal. I'll show you what that saying is in the Intune portal. And then, yeah, you can use group policy, Nerdio, whatever, to configure these settings. Okay, all right. So we'll go ahead over that now into the Intune portal. Okay, so we're in the Intune portal. What we now need to do is configure the Intune setting to enable those register settings on the device. Okay, so... I'm just going to head over into my console and I'll show you how to do that. So we need to create a custom setting because this setting isn't in the portal yet. So we need to do what we call an OMI setting. I'm just going to go into Windows, Manage Devices Configuration, and then create a new policy setting. We are going to select Windows 10. Profile type is going to be a template. And then we're going to create a custom template. Okay. So I'm going to hit Create. So we're going to call this Cloud... Kerberos. I need to put description there. If you want to put description there, you can do. Configuration setting. So this is where we put the OMI URI setting for this, right? And it's going to click add. So name, I'm going to call this cloud. A description. Again, you don't have to put anything in there if you don't want to. And the OMI is this one here. So this is from the Microsoft KB article. And we're going to put that as an integer. And I'm going to put that as a one for enabled and click save. So you can see there, that's the setting which is put in there. So device, vendor, MSFT, a Kerberos cloud, cloud Kerberos ticket retrieval enabled. And that will configure that ridge setting, the device. Okay. So click next, assignments. For example, I've got a group with my AVD session host in there. The session host that you want to use, you just put them into group. So I can just pick any in there. I'll pick that one as an example. Click next. We don't need to select anything there then just click review and create so you can see there i've got a device in that group click the create button and then that's all you need to do so that will then create those register settings we just need to give it a bit of time and put those settings to apply once they have applied log on to a session host and just make sure those settings are applied okay the other thing worth mentioning is this setting here as well. The setting that we've just done configures this setting here, but you also need to configure this. So this just needs to be red setting. You can do that however you want on the master image, via group policy, in tune, whatever you want, but just make sure you've got some policy in place which creates this red setting. All right, so that's the server side stuff done. Now let's go and test this on a device and see what happens. As a test user, I've created this account here, which is cloud only test. You can see we've got a UPN of cloud only. And the important thing here is on premises sync enabled. So now we've got no. So that's just to prove that this is actually a proper like cloud only account. And we're not syncing that user from Active Directory. So now you can see that what I'm going to do. I'm just going to log on to the session host with that user and then we'll see what happens. All right. So I'm logged into my Windows app. So I'm just going to click connect. This is the cloud only user we're logged in with. No error messages so far. So that's a good sign. So now we're logged on to the session host. Let's actually go now and see if we are connected to an FHW profile. Looking in the log file, here you can see the VDS attack connected to that storage file share. And if we look at the actual profile share itself, so if we just head on there, and we'll see here, we've got the cloud only tests account, which is the one that I was using. And you can see here, we've got the profile, which has been created. Just have a look at the permissions on that. So you can see that is like an entry ID account. So you can see there as an AD slash cloud only test. This is entry ID only, cloud only accounts, not sync with entry ID. 
we don't have to have any domain controllers. A lot of people have been waiting for this solution, having domain controllers sticking around just so you can have to create users from from the domain controllers, a bit of a pain. Now we can have an environment with no domain controllers and just pure cloud only accounts. So huge step forward with this. Yeah, I'm really happy about this. Maybe I can switch off my domain controller now. A lot of other companies can as well because we're in quite a few instances they're having to keep the main controllers around just specifically for this for this functionality so we've now removed that limitation as well obviously this is public preview but hopefully it will go ga soon feel free to test it what surprised me the most is how easy this was to configure all i had to do was create a storage account tick that box and then quite a few register settings and off we go it was that easy to do so yeah very impressed and very happy all right, that's it from me for this week. I hope you found this video useful. And if you did, please click that like and subscribe button. And I will see you next week. Thanks. Bye-bye.